So in this video, we'll try to replicate Apple AirTag. This side, so probably it will be somewhere here. It's decreasing, decreasing 1.5. Let's just try to press the button and let's see if it is ringing here. Okay. Okay, it's ringing somewhere here. So probably behind this being back. Okay, I found it, I found it. Like not completely, but we'll try to replicate a couple of features of it, just like precision tracking and also playing sound on a press of a button. And for making this project, we'll be using the exact same technology that Apple AirTag uses, which is nothing but the ultra wideband technology. And for that, we'll be using our board called as ESP32UWB board. So stick around with this video and let's see how much we are able to replicate close to Apple AirTag. So let's get started. And before starting the video, let me tell you an amazing feature of our sponsor LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. And that feature is called as interacting with customers. Using LTM, you can easily share your PCB design file, maybe 2D or 3D and even schematic by just adding their email ID in the list. The client will receive a link using which he or she can easily visualize your schematic and PCB files without downloading any software on their system. Isn't this hassle free? Well, even you can try out this and many other features of LTM designer software for absolutely free by clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking that link, you'll be getting an access of a free trial version of LTM designer software. And if you find it interesting, you may purchase it later on. Okay, so for making this project, we'll be using the ESP32 UWB board, which is an ESP32 based board with an ultra wideband chip on it. Well, I already made a dedicated getting started video of this board and it's already live on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched it out, do watch that video out to know how to use that board using Arduino ID. Okay, so coming back to the Apple AirTag video. So using this board, we're going to replicate a couple of features of Apple AirTag. Like we won't be able to replicate complete AirTag and I'll let you know the reason like why we can't replicate all the features by the end of the video. So stick around. Okay, so we'll be replicating two of its features. So let me show you how we're going to replicate each of the feature and which technology we'll be using for replicating those features. Let me show you. Okay, so now let's see what kind of features we are going to add to our own version of ad tag. Okay, so first feature is called as precision tracking and second feature is called as playing sound. Let's focus on precision tracking, like what is precision tracking. So uh, as you've seen in Apple ad tag, we used to locate that ad tag quite precisely. Like we, uh, we used to see how many meters that tag is away from the mobile phone or the ultra wideband receiver. Okay, so that kind of feature we can add in this particular ad tag as well how gonna how we gonna add let me show you so for that we're going to use the ultra wideband chip of our board now the ultra wideband uh, ultra wideband is such a technology where we can locate the uh, trans receiver module as close as 10 centimeter okay and this ultra wideband is uh, like a uh, popularly used in this kind of tracking devices and indoor positioning system okay so one point is clear uh, we'll be using precision tracking uh, with the help of ultra wideband technology and we'll be visualizing the distance on the display which is attached onto the transmitter side okay on transmitter side we'll be having an OLED display in which we'll be able to see how far the transmitter and receiver are is it one meter is it two meters so we'll be able to see the distance between two of them okay so the first point precision tracking is clear let's just uh, move on to the second point which is playing sound so what happens in Apple AirTag that a person can play sound on that AirTag by pressing button on their smartphone okay so that kind of feature we're going to add here so what we're going to do is we'll be adding a button inside the transmitter side okay so this is the push button and on the receiver side we'll be adding a buzzer here okay so this is a buzzer okay so now what we're going to do is as soon as the user presses the button we need to play some tune onto this buzzer okay and for that we do have uh, different different uh, wireless technologies to uh, accomplish this task one of which is Bluetooth another is BLE that is Bluetooth low energy and third is Wi-Fi okay all the three wireless technologies are built inside the ESP32 board but the question is 
which technology we are going to use. So if you are a regular follower of Tech ESMS, you must be knowing that we are using ESP now quite often. Okay, so we're running the series of ESP now. So we thought why not to add the ESP now protocol in this project as well. Now, those who don't know what is ESP now, let me click, uh, you know, cover it in very short. So ESP now is a wireless technology in which one a Wi-Fi device can talk to another Wi-Fi device without having any router or any hotspot in between. They can talk with each other directly, okay? So now let's focus on this uh, second feature. So what we'll do is, as soon as the user presses the button on this transmitter side, on the tag side, it will be sending the data to the receiver side via ESP Now protocol, okay? The data will be received here and it will be playing a tune onto the buzzer. So the second feature which is playing sound is also accomplished with the help of the Wi-Fi protocol. Okay, So these two features we're going to add in our own uh, ad tech based on ESP32 UWB board. Now let us focus on how we have written code for this particular logic. Okay, so here are the code for both the devices. On the left, we have the code for the tag and on the right, we have the code for the anchor. And I'll be explaining each of the code one by one. Starting with the tag side, then here, first of all, all the necessary libraries for the OLED screen, for the ultra wide band and for the ESP now protocol are included. And also we have one more library called a simple timer dot edge. Now this is something, uh, some new library that we haven't included in any of our uh, projects. So I'll let you know how to install it. So for this, you just need to go to sketch into include libraries and into manage libraries. Here just search for simple timer and press enter. And here you have to install the simple timer library whose T is small, okay? So you need to install this library and that's it. After that, what you have did is we have declared the button pin as zero. So on zero pin, we have attached the button, okay? And here is the broadcast address of the ESP now device, okay? So here you need to provide the MAC address of this receiver device, okay? So this is the MAC address. In case you don't know the MAC address, you can upload the code to find out the MAC address. Or what you can do, you can just type FF everywhere. So it will be, you know, turned into the broadcasting mode. It will broadcast to all the ESP now devices. That is one of the options, okay? So here I mentioned the particular MAC address of this particular device. Moving ahead, here is the uh, SPI pins for the UWB chip. Here is the OLD configuration let us move directly to the setup part first of all so on the setup part we are declaring the button as input this is something for the uwb chip and uh, this is for wi-fi initialization straight after that here we are adding the peer device that means we are adding the esp now device here after that, we are also, you know, uh, setting a callback function for timer. Now, first of all, why we are using the timer? Well, that will be cleared inside the loop part. So let us discuss the loop part of this uh, tag. Okay. So here we are running the timer after interval of every two seconds. And after every two seconds, this callback function will be called, which is responsible for sending the data via ESP now protocol. Okay. So in the loop, we are doing three tasks. Let me show you. Timer is responsible for uh, transmitting data to ESP now. This is one of the tasks. This uh, DW1000 ranging dot loop is responsible for ultra wideband uh, tasks. So it will be sending the ultra wide signal, receiving it and calculating the distance. And third task done is displaying data on the OLED screen, like how far the uh, receiver is from the transmitter. So the distance in meter will be displayed on the OLED screen. So these three tasks is performed inside the main loop part. Okay. And after every two seconds, it will be, you know, calling that function. It will send the data of the button. Okay. That was all about this tag code. On the anchor code, uh, let us go to the setup part. What we are doing is we are first of all initializing the ESP now because it will be receiving the ESP now data. Straight after that, here we are, you know, initializing all the necessary functions for UWB, that's the ultra wideband technology. Straight after that, uh, in the loop part, we are just running or just handling the ultra wideband part because the ESP now a uh, part is handled by the callback function, which is declared here inside the setup part. Okay. So what uh, this anchor uh, code is doing, it's doing two tasks. First of all, it is, you know, uh, connecting uh, with the transmitter via UWB. Second task is it will be, you know, uh, receiving the data via ESP now protocol. As soon as it receives the data, it will be going inside the uh, receive callback function in which it will fetch the data. And in case the data is zero, it will just call the play tune function. And the play tune, play tune function is nothing but a for loop, uh, which will be playing a buzzer in a particular pattern that we have defined here. Okay. And buzzer is connected to the digital pin two 
of this anchor tag so this is the simple code for both tag and the anchor and, and you pretty much already know the logic because we already discussed onto the whiteboard part okay that was all about the code now let's upload each of the code on the respective board and now let's just see our own made air tag in action okay so we powered on the project and let's see how much distance we are getting here and are baap re 1.3 abe yaar so we didn't add the a delay a delay wala code baki reh gaya yaar cut 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 okay so we forgot to add the a delay parameter in this code now a delay is such a parameter which is used to calibrate the distance between two uwb devices you can know more about a delay in a previous uh, video about getting started with uwb but now we had at the a delay and now uh, let's actually see this project in action okay so now you can see uh, this is the tag this is the anchor i have uploaded the uh, modified code and now we can see the distance between these two devices on the display which is somewhere around 20 cm and this is near to accurate okay and we also have a button on the tag side so let's just try to press button let's see what happens okay as you can see we are able to hear the buzzer tune onto the anchor side so both the features are working perfectly fine let's just try to move the anchor a bit away and let's see if we are getting the distance more or not so I'll slowly move this anchor on to the like far away from the tag and now on the tag you can see we got the distance as a 60 to 70 cm okay so it is perfectly showing the distance between both the boards okay Okay, so now let us test this particular uh, air tag kind of thing in a real environment. So what I'll do, I'll take this tag along with me. I'll go outside the studio and I'll ask my team to you know hide that anchor somewhere in the studio, and then I'll try to find out the tag with the help of the anchor based upon the distance and the buzzer sound. So let me just go out and team hide the tag. Okay, so the team is calling me. Let's go with this particular thing. And right now it's showing me distance of zero zero a meter because probably it is out of range uh, from this UWB. Okay, but let's just move inside the studio and let's see if we are getting the distance or not. Let us open the door. Uh, still, it is showing me zero point zero. Okay, it's showing the distance nine meters. So it is somewhere here in the studio only. Let's just move ahead. So distance is. Particular thing, four meters. We are pretty close, pretty close. Three point, okay, two meters, okay, three meters. Two point uh, zero. So it is somewhere here, probably. It's one point nine. It's two. It's two and one point nine. Okay, it's one point three here. Okay, so it's increasing in this particular distance, but the distance is very less in this side. So probably it will be somewhere here. It's decreasing, decreasing. One point five. Let's just try to press the button and let's see if it is ringing here. Okay, okay, it's ringing somewhere here. So probably behind this bean bag. Okay, I found it. 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 So here is the ultra wide band, and I found it with the help of this particular thing. Okay, so that was all about our own made Apple AirTag, but still we are not completely able to replicate the Apple AirTag, and I'll let you know the reason why we can't completely replicate the original Apple AirTag. Okay, so Apple AirTag not only provide the feature to track it precisely inside our room, but it also allows us to track that same object from anywhere in the world. That means you can find your missing bag here in India from New York. Okay, so this is provided by Apple AirTag, and this we can't replicate in our own DIY version of it, and it is just because. to find that particular tag globally apple uses their ecosystem that means uh, the air tag uh, you know scans the nearby iphone users and it takes the location of that particular iphone user and it send the data of the iphone user to the cloud and this is how we can you know actually know the location of the tag from anywhere in the world and we are not having that kind of ecosystem so we can't replicate that feature at all but yeah the most interesting feature which was precise tracking that we have cracked that we have replicated and that is working superbly fine and in future we are definitely thinking of to shrink down it in a very small size by using just the uwb chip and 
make it actually portable, usable air tech kind of structure. So just subscribe our channel if you don't want to miss out that upcoming uh, project that is soon like coming up on our channel. Also click the like button if you really liked our efforts to make our own version of Apple air tech. Do click the like button. It really matters a lot. And yeah, I am just ending this video here. And now just wait for my next one. Then explore, learn, share with me. Techie SMS.